this is going to be the top 10 most underrated characters in One Piece Bind Rush. And uh, if you're, if uh, your favorite character is not on here, a uh, character you think is underrated, that's fine. Uh, he's probably, that doesn't mean they're not underrated, it just means that they're not on the list. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, that's it. Let's hop right into this. So number one is going to be Pell. So Pell, he came out, he was underrated. People found out he did uh, a whole load of damage. So they started rating him properly. And then, well, no, through no fault of his own really, because they started spamming out knockback units, which kind of shafts Pell. It shafts Pell because his skill one, you know, if you have a knockback skill, you can take him out of it. Meaning he doesn't get to stack up his, um, stack up his attack, meaning he's not going to be as dangerous as he would be. And uh, if he doesn't stack up his attack, he's kind of useless because he's super squishy. And his only use is really doing a lot of damage and annoying the enemy. So with the use of a knockback in the meta, it made him fall off a bit. But I still think this dude is an absolute menace. Like his damage is through the roof. He can one shot most units in the game once his attack is stacked. And I still think he's a really good character to use. Not necessarily meta anymore. And I don't think many of these characters on the list are necessarily meta. Um, but the, Pell is very underrated in my opinion. Uh, I don't know how he got to the stage where people don't even think of using him anymore. At least I don't see him anymore. Uh, but he's still a really good unit in my opinion. And uh, yeah, so he's going to take number one. So number two is going to be... Luffy. Now Luffy absolutely dominated the game when he dropped. Antaio was in was a revolutionary uh, status effect, and still is. It's still it's literally why Luffy's re more relevant than he should be right now. Because he's a pretty old unit. He's a pretty old unit. I uh, used to counter Big Mom back in the day. Um, countered actually mostly X's until <laughs> until Roger dropped. Um, and then when Roger dropped, he was kind of relegated to being a unit that just use his anti-heal to stop Roger's healing because back then nobody could really stop Roger's insane healing. Um, you probably just die to him. So Luffy would just pop his anti-heal and run away and let Rod, uh, his teammates do the killing because Luffy was useless after that against Roger because his stun just buffed Roger and wouldn't really do enough damage anyway. But yeah, Luffy is still a one-shot machine. He can get up to 60% 60, 60 damage increase. That is crazy, like 60% damage increase and then his skill 2 is basically a one shot with that. Uh, it, he's a really dangerous unit. You play him like a rat, you just pop your skill 2 once in a while uh, when, you, when you're safe. Pop your skill 1, get them heals up, be annoying with anti heal, assist your team. You can still get more than 5 kills a game just with him. Like You just have to play him a bit, a bit more safe than you usually would with an attacker. But he's still a great unit and pretty underrated in my opinion. Next up is going to be Magellan. Now Magellan is one of the units that kind of carried my channel in the beginning. Um, one of my first few videos that actually popped off was a Magellan video. But that has been taken down because of copyright. But yeah, he, Magellan, he's somehow still good. He came out back in Blackbeard's era. Um, and, you know, ever since then... He was, he's, his usage just fell off. Nobody really uses him nowadays anymore, but surprisingly, he can actually defend against most of the meta. Now, you have units like Yamato who heal off his poison, but even then, like, I, 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 maybe I'll put up a clip on screen right now of me soloing a Roger and Yamato together. Venom Demon is an, an insane skill. Like, you pop it, let yourself get down, and Venom Demon do, does all the work. I'm telling you, Magellan doesn't need anything except heals. Give him heals on poison, and this dude is a top 10 attacker, defender. Like, Magellan's a man. It's like, he's really good. Really good. Um, okay, well, maybe I'm exaggerating. He's not really good, but he's a decent defender still. And I would call him very underrated because uh, at this point, he's non existent in the meta. Uh, and I don't blame people. He's not really worth using over the top defenders, but he's definitely a fun character as well as a good one as well. So. All right, so next up is going to be Monster Chopper. Monster Chopper is, I think, one of the best 1v1 units in the game. Most, most people don't realize it, but this dude is beating most characters in a 1v1. And it's because of his Tremor skill. His Tremor, the combo from Tremor into 1-2 normals and then a final slap. Like, that kills most characters in the game. But the drawback with Chopper is if he misses his Tremor, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> He's finished. 
um, because he's not the most tanky unit, but against defenders, he's beating any defender in the game um, pretty easily. <laughs> pretty easily have Marco. Now, Marine Forward Marco is a character I have had conflicting thoughts on because he has a whopping 0% capture speed. 0 capture speed. But, oh, and he's almost pretty bad and his skill too never hits, but his heals are really nice and he can fly, making him very useful in certain maps like another character in this list. So Marco can really be good at stalling, which makes him pretty good in my eyes. Uh, a pretty underrated character. I wouldn't call him pretty good in this meta anymore, but he can stall a lot of people. And that makes him useful for his team, even if he can't get a lot of flags. Uh, stalling, he can get some damage in sometimes. And he can fly across, making him useful on a few limited maps. So being underrated makes him make a list, so I don't really know what I'm saying. But yeah, next up is the character I was talking about, uh, similar to uh, Marco, would be Wedding Sanji. Wedding Sanji is just a better Marco. Um, well, without the excessive heals, but when Sanji can fly, but he can also do a lot of damage. His normal is way better. He has way more healing on flags. He has way more capture speed. That's one thing that makes him infinitely better than Sanji. I mean, Wonka already. And I, I've said this before. If you see me in discords or in streams, sometimes. Wedding Sanji, Andres Rosa is Andres Rosa Coliseum is the best runner in the game without. In my opinion, without an argument, the best runner in the game. Um, he can end games in less than 30 seconds. Just flies across, captures the flag, flies across again, captures the flag, goes for the back cap. That's it. He like that's that's it. The game's over. He's absolutely insane. He can one shot characters with his skill two. Uh, once an ally, ally dies, he's wow. I mean, honestly, I don't really care why he's not used much. Um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a bit biased because I really do enjoy playing him. I've gone for I have number one with him, and he's uh, one of my most liked characters, like in terms of how many likes I've gone with him. Uh, but yeah, I do think he's an amazing runner, an amazing runner, and it still holds up to this day. But he is really slept on, like really slept on. So he's gonna make this list, in my opinion, the most underrated character on the list. Alright, so next up is gonna be Shanks. Now, listen. Listen, Shanks is in that area where it's just like he's either way overrated or extremely underrated, uh, no pun intended. But Shanks is not good anymore. I will admit that I am a Shanks, huge Shanks fan, but he's not good anymore. But to call him trash is a no, like, no, this is disrespectful in my opinion. Shanks, Shanks players are trash. That's, that's what I'll say. Shanks players are really bad these days. Most players who use him are either nude him like you just got him and want to try him out or just never used him before they'll pop their counters randomly and get slapped uh use skill to win the most obvious way and get it dodged but sh when shanks is stacked he can wipe out an entire team with no difficulty and when you're facing a skilled shanks like okay it is really rare to find a skill shanks so maybe i can't really make that argument but shanks can wipe out an entire team like with a skill two, and obviously yes, yeah, skill two is predictable. But that's what I'm saying. You need to, you need to be in the right circumstances, which is why he's kind of situational. Unfortunately, um, he needs to kill people to get his stacks, but he can't kill people that easily without his stacks. Eh, yeah, but in my opinion, he's still a solid attacker, and he's really underrated. People are calling him straight up trash, which I completely disagree with. Uh, I think he's a solid attacker and I think that you should wait for v3 shanks because y'all about to Respect shanks once more. The next up is going to be Marco Ace Mace uh, Mace is in my opinion a Decent defender. He's fallen off, but that is a given considering he's over a year old uh, But his shield is really useful on maps like dress Rosa, on maps like uh, drum island where you can completely block off an exit uh, an entrance a ramp an entry whatever you want to call it you can completely block off that and you, the enemies will just be shredded by your teammates as long as your teammates gather up behind you get those heals um you know mace can be a really good defender and he can tank a lot of the characters he even got a buff recently that made him get more defense or damage reduction when he's charging up skills uh when he's charging up his skill too uh he's a pretty good character um but he has fallen off in my opinion he's no longer 
honestly he was under always underrated because he has no damage um so character uh, people don't really like characters that do no damage uh, from what i've seen anyway mace is gonna be one of the more underrated defenders i would say uh but yeah he's still solid i think he's still really usable in this meta right now uh but not the good great defender he once was before i'm uh, speaking of def underrated defenders mihawk mihawk has fallen off like a lot, I keep saying this with a lot of these characters, but that's just it. If you're underrated in this meta, you probably fall off. Um, that's probably the case. Or uh, the people just really don't like you. Like Judge, Judge is a solid defender, but I hate him, so I call him trash. Um, so Mihawk, uh, he, gained, he came back to some relevance because he he counters Dofi with his uh, with his skills. That alone makes him a solid choice because countering Dofi is pr practically countering a lot of the meta right now. Because uh, though he's a meta character, uh, and yeah, Mihawk is still solid in my opinion. Um, not the monster he once was, but still good enough to do well. He has uh, some nice traits against attackers. Another tr a twenty extra twenty percent against it, um, damage to attackers. Uh, definitely not the best defender anymore, but still solid, and I would call him underrated. And finally, maybe an extra addition. Uh, I was hesitating to put him in this since he's so recent, but it is true. Silver Mask is one of the most underrated characters in the game because he his uh, this kid is interesting. The way Bandai decided to handle it, um, they gave him pretty much no damage. Uh, his invincibility is kind of weird in that you can't attack or do anything within it. I don't appreciate what Bandai did with him. They definitely could have made him better, but I still think he is a great runner if you can play him without attacking, without wanting to attack anyone. You can't guard your treasure, unfortunately, because his uh, skill 2 does relatively no damage, it's just a knockback. His shield is also kinda nice, to, this, despite what people say about it. It allows him to tank any one skill in the game, uh, unless it's a multi-hit skill, but like Jack. Um, but he can tank a Kamusari, he can tank a Inugami Guren one time before it gets destroyed. And that could be the one second he needs to capture a flag. So yeah, I think Silver Mask is underrated. Um, I won't call him one of the best runners like I did when he first released, but he's up there. Uh, I think he's a solid character. And finally, we have Kyoshiro. Kyoshiro has never been fairly rated in my opinion. Uh, since release, people call him uh, mediocre because his skill doesn't kill someone. It leaves them on one HP even if they die. Uh, which I guess Bandai was trying to stay accurate to his uh, his actions in the anime and manga, uh, but that kind of hindered him in people's eyes, made his skill a bit lackluster. But Kyoshiro can do a lot of damage, and he's pretty sneaky, like Silver Mask. He can take advantage of people not looking on the mini map, allowing him to back cap or just disrupt the enemy team. Uh, people really don't pay attention. They'll see five uh, dots on the mini map that are their that teammates' color. And they will not even realize that there's Kyoshiro over there. Uh, and yeah, so Kyoshiro is still a, a, a good runner. I genuinely think he's a good runner right now. Uh, he does a lot of damage. His heroes are decent. He can capture flags well with his uh, trait. As long as he's above 50% HP, you're pretty much chilling. Um, so Kyoshiro uh, should avoid fights, but he can do a lot of damage. Like, a lot of damage. His uh, skill 1, despite it not being able to kill, 892 skill attack Make they choose to make that one the one that doesn't kill because if it could kill whew, oh no um and yeah that's gonna be the top 10 uh most underrated characters in my opinion i don't know if you guys have another character that's underrated there's obviously a way more than this and, uh but these are just gonna be the top 10 in my opinion hope you guys enjoyed and uh, i will catch you on the next one have a good night guys